and lean against the never diminishing Z1000. Shouldn't lean too hard, it's only on paddock stands. Um, although they are pretty tough, aren't they? I digress already. Um, yep, yeah, lots of parts off the bike now. Last video was doing the air filter. And in this one, I'm going to have a go at the spark plugs. Not done before on this bike, so it's a learning exercise. It's nicer in here than it is out there, you can probably hear the wind. So the first job is to get this air box off the bike. Apparently the key bits to get off, we've got a bolt up here that holds the air box on. We've got a clip here that I've already taken off when I was doing the air filter. And also this breather pipe here, which is just a rubber pipe held on with a big metal clip. So, let's make a start here. There are also two clamps around the bottom of the airbox and you have to loosen those and it bolt right in there. One on either side so let's hope they're not too tight because I can only get my little T-bar in and I suspect my oldie T-bar is not the strongest oh, but that's actually come out quite nicely. It says loosen not remove so I'll just take it out a bit for now and we'll see how we get on. Now allegedly you can now just take the airbox off. I'm told the first time it comes off it's a bit of a pig. So let's find out. I've read people saying various things about this taking quite a lot of force. So hopefully I don't break anything. There's another connector down there I just found, just here. This is, it feels rock solid. It doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. Seems to have got it. Make sure there's nothing else connected under there I don't know about. There is indeed one more hose just here. what we got there. Another, another hose down here. Hiding them away. That's what it looks like 
without the air box in. I'm now going to cover these up so I don't want any dirt falling into them. Uh, the wrong bit of dirt in there can cause you to have a throttle get stuck open which would be uh, well faster potentially than you wanted it to be. So I'm going to cover them up so nothing can fall in while I'm working on it and then I can crack on with the next stage. This little hose is an interesting one. It's the one that I, I took off last and didn't realise was there until the last moment. And uh, apparently it's an oil drain, so if any oil gets into the air box, it drains out of there. And down the side of the bike, if I bring you a bit lower, and it's quite difficult to see, but in there, you just see a little bit of white plastic. So that's a little oil bottle. So they say that when you're doing this, you should visually inspect that bottle that they've handily hidden behind all of these pipes and chunks of metal. And if it's got any oil in, you should drain it. Hmm. I can't work out how to get it out, but I'm going to kind of fumble with it and see what happens. suspect the chances of actually getting it out are roughly round about none. You need much smaller... oh hang on, hang on, oh look at that! So there you go. So that's what that pipe's all about, I've lost that pipe now. Try and get it back through the top where it's supposed to be. Um, however, the good news is it's clean. Nothing in there at all. So I'll just push it back where it was. Okay, next job then is to remove the stick coils. There are four stick coils in the bike. One, two, three, and four. And basically, you just, I'd say it's just, we'll find out, take off that connector to remove the, uh, the cable that delivers the electrical, and then pull the coil out. Now, they're quite long things, generally. I haven't seen them in this bike yet, but I'm assuming they're going to be a good six inches long, which does make this one a bit worrying. Seen as in the wisdom Kawasaki have decided to put all this cabling above it. Anyway, let's see. I'm going to start with one further away. So, connector off, and then I've got to pull that out. And that, this is going to be stiff, I'm sure. It's one of those situations where there's very little room to get your fingers in, and on top of that, it's very, very, very tight. I guess we just keep trying. Try the one next to it, see if that's any better. Try one and get a feel for it, and then go on from there, I suppose. Put my gloves back on. Sometimes you have to wonder about people who design these things. They do a fantastic job making the bike, but the top of that coil pack has actually got a cable running across it. Doesn't make anything any easier, does it? And you've got this rubber, I don't know if it's to keep things clean or if it's a heat shield or what, but um, that's across the top as well, and there's no way of getting that off. So everything's just working against you being able to pull these things out. Not 
going to stop me trying that. Yay! I got one. Not as long as I thought it would be, but still. Certainly going to be awkward for there. There's one coil off. I'll be careful, these are delicate. So the next job is to try and get that spark plug out. Special pl spark plug socket with the rubber in the middle to grip the spark plug. On an extension, let's see if I can pull that spark plug out. spark plug. That's my old spark plug. Looks like a spark plug. And a nice new one to replace it. These are iridium ones. Uh, the bike requires them. I mean I don't know if it wouldn't work without them but Kawasaki say it must be iridium. So iridium it is. And I've got to be careful not to drop them, so hopefully it won't drop it. And then the trick that Tosh taught me was get it in place flat, because these things are so easy to cross thread. Just turn it the wrong way and you'll feel it get to the end of the thread. And when you feel it get to the end of the thread, then you can start turning it the right way. And hopefully it won't cross thread. And obviously any unexpected pressure, take it out and try again. That's going in nice and easily. And you absolutely mustn't over tighten these because you can do some damage deep inside your engine. So this is another one that I'm going to give. torque wrench treatment too. And you can probably tell that wasn't very tight. In fact, just 13 Newton meters. We put the coil back in and there is actually a little mark that it's very hard to see but there's a mark down there that says point the head of the coil in that direction so that's what I'm doing make sure it's correctly aligned I'll try and show it on the camera but to be honest I can barely see it with my eyes and then they just push back on again Little hands and arms needed. I just need to do that another three times, including that tricky one on the left. Well, that's the process. I'm going to finish this video up here rather than showing you the other four. Um, I have had a disaster, unfortunately. Um, one of them stuck in so hard that when it came out it's actually torn the rubber ring around the top which is a bit of a nuisance because that's what clicks the thing into position so it looks like before I can finish the job off fully I shall be buying well hopefully another rubber ring and not another uh, stick coil because they're going to be pricey we shall see but anyway doesn't always go perfectly the, uh, the overall job is done though, 
So it's just on with uh, replacing this and then the next job. Thanks for watching everyone. Ride safe. And I'll talk to you all again soon.